Generally speaking, PC gaming is synonymous with a keyboard and mouse, and for good reason. Genres like first-person shooters and strategy benefit greatly from the improved accuracy provided by this control scheme, and it can be difficult to grow accustomed to using anything else for games that fall within these categories. While most releases try to include proper support for keyboard and mouse setups, some PC games are just better with controllers. Titles that focus on reflex-based movement or high-octane melee action, for example, tend to be perfect fits for gamepads. Similar to keyboard and mouse, a few genres are associated with controllers, especially if their main franchises happen to start on consoles and eventually made their way to computers. What's going on everyone, Jeffrey here, welcome to Game Rant. In this video, I'll be highlighting 10 PC games that are better suited to using a game controller, so let's hop into the list. Number 10, Lords of the Fallen. A few exceptions aside, most Souls-like should be played with a controller. In recent years, the subgenre's offerings have gradually started to do a better job of catering to keyboard and mouse purists, reaching the point where most projects are more than playable in this state. The same extends to Lords of the Fallen, which does not treat the traditional PC control scheme as an afterthought. Players can rebind their keys as they like, allowing them to craft an experience that suits their fancy, and they will likely need to do some tweaking since the default setup can be overwhelming. In comparison, Lords of the Fallen's controller setup should be ready to go right out of the gate. Everything makes sense and feels perfectly optimized for the combat system, ensuring players do not have to waste too much time trying to find something that works for them. Number 9, Forza Horizon 5. Most racing games generally play better with a controller than a keyboard or mouse. For racing sims, a quality wheel is the way to go, but the same doesn't always hold true for arcade racers. When driving the fastest cars in Forza Horizon 5, players might find themselves most comfortable with a controller as the vehicles tend to be easier to direct. Forza Horizon 5 is a relaxing game with quite a bit of downtime as players will spend a significant amount of time driving through Mexico while admiring the vistas. A controller fits the tone and pacing of the game well since it allows users to sit back and chill more readily. Number 8. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge The best way to play a beat-em-up that is a clear throwback to the 90s arcade scene is to get a fight stick, and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge is no exception. However, it is not worth buying a new peripheral for just one game, so most players will likely make do with either a controller or a keyboard. The latter's bindings can be remapped, but there is a reason keyboards are not typically associated with beat-em-ups. They just don't quite feel right. Shredder's Revenge is at home on a controller, especially if the game's local co-op feature is utilized. The game really comes alive when more than one player is participating, and this process will almost certainly require a few people to pick up some gamepads. Number 7. Psychonauts 2 Psychonauts 2 can be seen as a stand-in for platformers in general, particularly 3D ones. For the most part, these games benefit from the more precise movement provided by an analog stick, while they are usually designed to utilize a controller's buttons as intuitively as possible. Psychonauts 2 goes one step further by including a combat system that requires quick reflexes and the incorporation of a Psy Powers wheel, both things that feel better though on a controller. Number 6. Castle Crashers Castle Crashers debuted way back in 2008 on the Xbox 360, and it didn't come to PC until more than four years later. Unsurprisingly, the game's console origins can be seen in its controls, as they are more intuitive with a controller. Now, that's not to say that a keyboard mouse can't get the job done, but it will take some getting used to. Meanwhile, Castle Crashers just feels right on a gamepad. Castle Crashers casts players as knights who are tasked with saving four princesses. While enjoyable solo, the side-scroller also supports co-op. In fact, it is arguably the ideal way to experience the title. Although playing out like a hack-and-slash beat-em-up, Castle Crashers is also a light RPG that allows players to level up their characters, unlocking new attacks along the way. Number 5. Atlas Fallen Deck 13 has spent the last decade specializing in action RPGs with Souls-like combat. Unsurprisingly, both the Surge games are better fits for controllers, and the same could be said for 2014's Lords of the Fallen, although that release is difficult to recommend in any form. Although not a massive departure from the developer's previous projects, 2023's Atlas Fallen still covers new territory, offering a combat system that is closer to the hack-and-slash genre than something like Dark Souls. However, the game retains some elements from Deck 13's previous releases, including an emphasis on reading the enemy's moveset and loadout variety in the form of a momentum system that allows players to unlock new abilities and skills as a reward for performing well in battle. Now, Atlas Fallen is a mixed bag. The story has potential, but is let down by a bland presentation. While quite beautiful at times, the semi-open world gets repetitive since most of the areas are just deserts. 
The enemies are generally fun to fight, but they are recycled a bit too often during the second half of the campaign. The combat is fast paced and satisfying, and the momentum system adds a lot of replay value. However, the camera can get in the way during battles, which isn't ideal. Alice Fallen has plenty of good ideas that do not fully come together, creating a hole that is decent rather than great. Still, this title could hit the spot with anyone looking for a hack and slash double A game, although PC players should ideally have a controller available. Number 4 Hades In another somewhat situational case, Hades is better with a controller most of the time. Certain weapons, such as the Adamant Rail, are much better with a keyboard and mouse, especially for those players who wish to remove auto aim. When not using ranged weapons in Hades, a controller is the most reliable way to go. Movement and reflexes are critical for survival in Supergiant's game, and Zagreus' odds go up when utilizing a controller. Luckily, Hades is awesome with either control method. Number 3. Sonic Frontiers Sonic Frontiers represents Sega's franchise as a whole, since nearly all the games are better with a gamepad, particularly the 3D entries. Platformers in general benefit from the flexibility provided by a thumbstick, and this is especially the case with Sonic the Hedgehog. These games move at an absolutely blistering pace at times, and actions like boosting are simpler to execute on a controller. Beyond gamepads seeming like a more natural fit, some Sonic games, including Frontiers, treat keyboard and mouse much like an afterthought, which does little to incentivize people to take that control scheme out for a spin. Number 2. The Trials Series Ubisoft's Trials series revolves around motorcycle stunts, with each game challenging players to carefully make their way through platforming courses while on a two-wheeler. Despite having origins in Java, the franchise rose to prominence on the Xbox 360, although it eventually expanded to other platforms, including, of course, in this list case, PC. Generally speaking, every Trials game is superior with a controller since analog triggers provide an important level of control over a vehicle's acceleration. Keyboards and mice struggle to replicate this style of input, although it is still somewhat possible, which puts them at a notable disadvantage compared to gamepads. Now, just to be clear, the Trials games are generally very good on PC, they are just not the best fit for the platform's default peripherals. However, unlike consoles, PC players can also pick and choose their preferred controller, which can make a difference in Trials. Number 1. Devil May Cry 5 For the most part, Capcom did a decent job mapping Devil May Cry 5 to the keyboard and mouse. The hack and slash game works pretty well using those input devices, although it would depend on whether the user has a gaming mouse with side buttons. Regardless of that fact, most players will probably feel more comfortable using a controller, particularly if they grew up with Devil May Cry on the PS2. Ultimately, it comes down to personal preference and familiarity, which extends to most of the best games to play with a controller. And there we have it everyone, 10 PC games that are typically more enjoyable with a controller instead of a keyboard and mouse. Thank you so much for watching this video from Game Rant. Be sure to check out all sorts of other top-notch gaming content, including more lists, news, reviews, guides, originals, and so much more right here on Game Rant. Have a truly wonderful and happy day, everyone. We'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye.